Thank you, Sesh. So, um, so far, like Sesh, he talked about the architecture um, that we proposed for PDW, and uh, he walked through the mainframes and how we moved the data into HTFS and how we created a report out of business objects. So this is again a quick comparison of um, you know the solutions, which is um, if you want to compare both the RDB and the solution, and uh, Hadoop solution, we think it's um, the RDB and the solution would have made the users happy by by making sure that they were able to move from mainframes onto a different platform like Teradata or Oracle, and uh, throwing business objects or Cognos reporting on top of that, they would have been able to <coughs> excuse me visualize the reports and it would have definitely made the users happy right but then we didn't go there because we felt like it's like taking the can down the street approach and uh, we wanted to go with the uh, big data because it not only makes the users happy but it also enables you enables the users for better insights we say that because if i don't know if um, people in the back can read this but it says enable business to do analytics using this data and with more data as it flows through just one platform. So what it means is like once we put this data into HTFS, there are a lot of tools that you have seen in the previous slides. You have seen all those boxes, blue boxes, yellow boxes. So the data is there already. And if there is more credit data flowing into HTFS, you can do a lot of analytics. And there are a lot of tools that it comes with IBM Big Insights um, uh, distribution. And uh, this is actually a, the report. Um, so I think a lot of, uh, if you're a mainframe programmer, you really understand what this report is. This is actually an easy trip report. And as you can see, um, the report has all the title and stuff. And um, you got, this is column headers. Um, this is actually a tilde delimited file. And um, basically, they're, they're, this is the report that they're producing today. And um, they still wanted to produce the same report even tomorrow after we go into Hadoop. And we are like, why, right? What do you want to go ahead and put that till the reports and uh, you know when there are a lot of visualization reports available in the market so we took them away from that and at least one step ahead and forced them to kind of use the business objects and cognos which are bi tools so as you can see this is a much better looking report um the html it's not highlighted here but as you can see this is a better looking report right so it's like cleanly formatted. And not only that, you will also have a lot of visualization options. Like you can build a bar chart. You can build a pie chart on top of that. So, so the report looks like this today. And it's going to look like that tomorrow. So, so here, what is the one-to-one method? Yeah, so they, they, um, the, the team wanted to uh, exactly reproduce it for their business customers. So that's fine. But I think given the. They, they're familiar with the, the, all the possibilities that they could get out of this new way of doing things, right? Today, you can't visualize the data easily unless you put into an Excel and, and play with it, versus here, it's a different capability. But again, the point here is that we reproduce exact same report on Hadoop architecture. So with that, I want to go ahead and quickly show you a demo. We don't have a lot of time. Um, and within 10 minutes, we, don't, we cannot learn a lot of big data. But we are still going to try as to what we did in a very quick uh, demo. So hold on to your questions. And at the end of the session, we'll have like 10 minutes to ask questions. So let me throw again a quick summary on what this demo is going to cover today. Um, so I bro broke it down, the whole architecture diagram that you have been seeing before. I just broke it down into four more um, different steps here. So as you can see, um, this is step one. Um, which is taking the mainframe file and putting it into the Hadoop cluster. So this is Hadoop IBM cluster. And within Hadoop IBM cluster, you got local file system, Linux file system, and also you got HTFS file system. So HTFS file system is nothing but Hadoop distributed file system, which is actually the core for all the Hadoop. And we'll talk about, we can talk about like two hours on that alone. But what we're going to really do here in this demo is we're going to take um, this file, that whatever we loaded into the local file system, and we are going to move that into the HTFS file system. And to do that, we are going to use a tool called SyncSort. Like, again, Sesh pointed out that this is not um, the mainframe SyncSort utility, because there used to be a utility called PGM equal to SyncSort that does a lot of sorting. I think somebody from IBM probably <laughs> went out and opened this uh, product. But this, this product, um, Big Data SyncSort, does a great job of handling COM3, 
data and also like converting the acidic to ASCII data. So this is pretty cool. And it comes up with a GUI so you don't have to write any coding per se, right? And you just you click, if anybody worked on Informatica or data stage, it's bingo, it's easy to go, right? And the next one is um, we are going to read the file that we moved. Um, we just moved into the HTFS file system, and we're going to create a table definition on top of that. That's what, like, Seish was talking about, schema on read. So you got the data, put that in the HTFS file system, which is in Linux, and you're going to throw a table definition on top of that. So for, so, so I, want, I want to tell this, like, in Hadoop, people are thinking, okay, it's Hadoop, I need to know Java. Right? I need to know Java, I need to know Linux. It was like three years before. But now, if you know SQL, you're good to go. Right? So that's the enablement that folks are doing in the market where you know, they're enabling all the SQL users to come and use Hadoop like any other system. Right? So what this is, what this one <coughs> here is big SQL, which is SQL on Hadoop for IBM. Right? So what this is going to do is it's going to give you a command line option and then a GUI console to create the table on top of the file that you just loaded, right? And then you, once the table definition is available, you can read the table using business objects or cognos, and then you can start your um, universe and reports and go from there. So we're gonna, I'm gonna walk through this, and one other thing that I wanna point here is like web console. So this is actually a GUI that IBM gives us, which you can use to go ahead and browse Okay, show me what all the files that I have in the HTFS file system, and show me what is my cluster status, and all this good stuff. So we're gonna probably take a look at that. For this demo, um, I'm not really going to show you the, you know, taking the mainframe file and putting it into the local file system. It's gonna be boring for you guys. Um, so I'm gonna directly show you the file that we already loaded in the Linux file system. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at that file. So this is, this is actually um, the file that was loaded into the Linux file system. So you might be asking why it is CSV, but um, it was a mainframe file, and then we moved, changed the format of the file into CSV, and it's here. So now our goal is basically to take this file and then move into HTFS file system, which is step number two, right? I want to do this. But how am I going to do that? I'm going to use the SyncSort tool, right? And uh, that's SyncSort. I don't know if you can read from the back row, but this is SyncSort tool. Like I said, like this is like ETL tool, like Informatica or data stage, and you got aggregate function, copy, join, merge, and a whole lot of functions, right? But what we are trying to do here is really simple. So the Harvard prop ACA file, that's the input file we put into the Linux file system, which is in the local file system. It could be a desktop, anywhere, right? It's not in the Hadoop HTFS file system yet. But, so that's your source. And then this is your target. And um, the target path is HTFS data, which is the name that we provided, right? It could be anything. It could be HTFS something. And world demos. And this is the output file. This file is going to be changed to data file, which I'll show you in a bit. And um, that's it. So you just run it. And uh, that's running. So what it is really doing is it is taking the file from the local file system and then moving it into HTFS file system. You, you did not even talk about Java here, right? Let's see if, uh, so that's complete. So it just moved um, close to 30,000 blah rows in, in about like 16 seconds. Um, don't compare it to anything. Um, this is being run in a small cluster. It has just three nodes, one name node and two data node, which means nothing. Um, so it could be totally different when you, when you hit uh, you know, big time, uh, prime time production cluster. So, so that's completion of our step two here. So we moved the data into HTFS file system. Uh, you're not gonna believe me, so I'm gonna show you where it is. So let's go ahead to the console. This is pretty pretty cool uh, console. Um, as you can see, um, let me not talk about it now, but let me go ahead and see the file we just moved into the HTFS file system. Right. Um, so the path, if, it, if you remember, is HTFS data, um, and uh, the file was in world, 
and uh, in the demo folder. That's the data, right? It doesn't make any sense to me because it's just all comma separated some values here. This file, as this file, this is all the headers that you're seeing. This is a huge file. It had like thousand rows, thousand columns in it. So it's really a wide file, right? And IBM Big Insights comes up comes up with many options. So if you want to visualize the tool, it's like a spreadsheet where you know you go and select um, the delimiter. Because this is a CSV file, I'm going to use the comma. C I'm going to select comma separated delimiter. So you got quite a few options here. You can load JSON, like if you have Twitter data, social media data. If you want to see that in proper format, you're going to click JSON, right? But this is a CSV, so you're going to click comma separated value here. So I'm going to click that and click OK. Bingo. So you have now all the thousand columns file loaded. I mean, this is this is not a table. This is just a file sitting, but you're visualizing. You're, you're seeing that file, right? So you can you can see all the values here. And there is a um, next button because it cannot display all the columns here um, in one line. So you can click that, and you can visualize the file. So back to demo. So we did that. We loaded the file from Linux file system into the HTML file system, and we checked it using the web console. Now I'm going to throw a table definition on top of this. And to do that, I have two options. One is JSquish. This is Java SQL shell. And there is one more thing called console, which is what we saw. I'll show you, you know, two different ways of creating a table on top of that file, which is in HTFS file system. Okay. So um, this is actually a, I already started, um, so this is the command to open up, to bring that from your a Linux prompt, you run that command to bring JSquish. And uh, this is uh, like a command line way of doing it, okay? So now, uh, someone asked a question about you know the tables. Now I'm going to create, a, th there is a database already created um, within Hadoop, right? PDW raw DB. You can think of it as like a schema or a database, right? And I'm going to use that schema. This is syntax of Hadoop, how you have to run it. So I'm going to use that schema, and I'm going to throw the table definition in there. So. That's the table. So I'm going to create an external Hadoop table, and that's the name of the table I'm going to give. And you can see all these columns, right? Every column, like this is a thousand column table. This is really huge, 1,084 columns. And at the bottom, this is a very interesting piece. I'm not sure you can see that, but um, you're specifying the location. So what is this location? So if you, if you go back, this is where you kept your data data file, right? That's the directory. So all you're saying is, okay, data is there. I'm just going to throw a definition on that, definition on that and, then, um, and then I'm going to read using the table. So let me go ahead and quickly run, and uh, Sage can. As you can see, the counter, um, it's really showing 1,084. Okay. Bingo. But it created the table. Sesh, just give me a second here, and I will. So back to back to this is uh, this is like RDBMS, right? This is SQL. I mean, I didn't do anything fancy here. No Java yet at least for this project, like whatever. Um, I'm not saying that not against Java, um, not that I want to be, but this project really didn't demand for making any, writing any JavaScripts or anything like that. But you can do a whole lot of things with Java, Python, Ruby, and uh, any, any scripting languages. And uh, you know, Hadoop goes very good with all those scripting languages. You can write MapReduce programs in the way how you want to be. So there you go. So that's actually um, the number of records that we loaded in the table. It's 30,000. So Sesh, you want to add some, something? No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it takes some time because it's uh, like on a little PM and you can see notes from this. Yeah, we do. So, uh, yeah, the reason why it took a little time is uh, because of the infrastructure that we're running it on. But it's uh, it, the point we're trying to make is really the scheme on read concept and also uh, just treat. At the end of the day, we can, with the abstract layer of database, 
or SQL. We are able to just view everything underneath as a relational database at a, at a fraction of cost and also uh, the flexibility with which you can bring so much data into it and then be able to throw what type of model uh, or table definition on it as you like without really having to have any predefined schema definition. <clears throat> so you want to show the quick report? Um, yes. We want to make sure we have some time for you to ask questions. I'm sorry. So we went in step three. Um, so we just created a table on top of the file. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to connect using business objects to pull the table, right? So that's that, that's a big SQL table, and I'm going to pull that into business object universe, and. Um, so it's already done, um, but I'm just going to, so this is the universe. If anybody knows business objects, the, you, you know what universe is, and we have our BACC team here. So I don't know if you can read this, but uh, this is the table um, This is the table that we just loaded. So as you can see, this, this has got all the thousand columns in it. So I, so business objects is here, Hadoop is here. So we put Hadoop drivers in business objects. So it can ODBC driver, it reads the file. It reads the table, brings it to business objects. And then on the left, you create um, the facts and dimensions. Um, I think he asked a question. But so that's where you pull your uh, facts, facts and dimensions. And then this is where you build your model, right? R what we are showing is just one table, just for this demo. But you could be like having like, 10 tables or five tables, and then you will do all the joins and you'll build the universe, right? And once the universe is built, you're going to, um, once the universe is built, you're going to export it. So there is export and import option. Once you export it, what happens is, so this is, you develop everything in your desktop, but then when, when you export it, there is a business object servers. Um, server, and then it'll be pushed there. From there, it's a, it's a web console that you'll have. Um, so this is the web console, and from here you can just go ahead and run a report. So I just clicked, I was fast, I clicked create a new web intelligence report, and it will ask me what universe do you want to use. So it's going, then I'm going to say, oh, this is the universe I built, I'm going to use that, right? And what this will actually do is it will bring all the facts and the dimensions column that I had onto the left, right? So I, I have my facts and dimension columns, and uh, let me quickly run a report here. So, so let's say I want to division, division age, and uh, you know charge amount, and run that query. Bingo. Right. So mainframe, mainframe easy to reports versus moving the data from mainframes into local, then moving into HTFS, then throwing table definition, reading it. What the advantage, yes, we are hopping four steps, but you can blow it up. You can scale horizontally as much as you want. You know, 60 terabytes or 600 petabytes. Still, it's going to, it's going to capable, easy scalability. Um, so before, so this is, this is exactly what I wanted to cover here in this demo. Um, you can, we have uh, Q&A starting in two minutes. You can ask questions. So this is, again, the summary. Um, so. So what, what we really saw is the mainframe file, using SyncSort, we moved that file into local file system, then HTFS file system, then we created a big SQL table. Then we used uh, business objects to really create a report. And that covers the covers our architecture of what we did. It seemed very simple, but we put a lot of efforts here. We, we spent weeks in putting the ODBC drivers and JDBC drivers and uh, you know testing out SyncSort because these vendors are new. You know They are learning with our mistakes. Right, SyncSort. That's how. That's how all the open sources are growing. Right. So we definitely gave input to SyncSort and um, um, and IBM. IBM was very helpful, and uh, they they have. Uh, we will talk more about um, Big SQL and Hive because these two are like IBM says Big SQL is much better Hive, and uh, we did see that it's good. Um, we will talk about that more in future sessions. So with that, that's the demo that we wanted to really talk about, and uh, I'll hand it over back to Sesh. Any questions? We can hold on until... Yeah, I, I think we're pretty much ready for questions. So again,